Because Adventure. Today I'm going to show you how to replace these tire pressure sensors. Recently we took a road trip with our 2011 Jeep Liberty and not 30 miles from the house the tire pressure sensor light came on on the dash. So when I got to a safe place to pull off the freeway I checked all four tires and they were at 33 pounds which is the recommended pressure for this vehicle. So I wasn't quite sure what was going on. The vehicle was fully loaded at the time and I thought that that might have something to do with it. Uh, so we continued on with our trip, you know, closely keeping an eye on the tires and didn't have any, any real problems with it other than the light going off by itself. And then after a couple hours on the freeway, it would come back on and then go off again. So once we got to our destination and unloaded the vehicle, I thought maybe, oh, okay, that'll it'll reset itself and that, that issue will go away, but it didn't. All the way home, it was the same thing. So in order to find out a little bit deeper what the problem might be, uh, I did some investigating. The first thing that I did was to connect my OBD2 Wi-Fi adapter to the vehicle, and then I'm going to use the JSCAN app to diagnose what the problem is. To do that, I'm going to start with putting the wireless adapter into the port where it belongs. I'm going to turn the ignition key to the run position, not starting the vehicle. And there's our light blinking on the dash now. And then uh, I'm going to go ahead and I will do a screen record on this so I can split screen and the first thing that you have to do once the adapter is plugged in we'll have to get on that network I'm going to go to settings Wi-Fi and I need to connect to the OBD2 scanner And that is connected now. Then I'm going to open JSCAN app. And this vehicle, like I said, is a 2011 Jeep Liberty. So that is what they call a KK model. So I'm going to scroll down and they call it in the app, they call it a Cherokee Liberty KK 2008 to 2013. I'm going to select that. I want to connect to the scanning. And then that brings up the app. Uh, I'm going to start with, uh, I'm going to go jump right into an advanced scan. And that's going to check a bunch of things. Including the TPMS sensors. And right here you can see I got a C1502 tire pressure sensor 2 internal component failure so there's something wrong with that now okay that's good to know that one of one of them is uh, failing evidently but what I don't know and what I haven't been able to find any information about is which one it is which one is number two um, my best guess is it's going to be uh, number one is probably driver's side front and Number two is probably passenger side front. So I'm going to probably replace that one first and see if the issue goes away. But I did go ahead and buy four new sensors because everything that I've read with this vehicle being 10 plus years old now, the batteries and the sensors, they, they're getting old and they're getting weak. And quite possibly it could just be a dead battery. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace all of them so that I'm not repeating this process a month from now or six months from now or whatever. So now that I have an idea of which tire I want to change first, uh, I pulled out all the tools that I'm going to need for this project. And the whole purpose of this video is to show you how you can do this at home yourself using nothing but basic tools that any shade tree mechanic might have on hand. I did buy an $8 valve stem puller off of Amazon. I have my 
my Viair 300 portable air compressor that I'm going to use for this project. Uh, I have a screwdriver set that has a bit that is 5 64ths hex on it. And then I'm going to use my ratchet uh, that came with my 2016 Jeep Wrangler, actually, with a little tool kit because these bits fit right into the ratchet real nice. Uh, what I'm also going to use is the scissors jack from the vehicle, and that's going to help me break that tire bead so I can get the sensor out of there, and I'll show you how that works. Just a word about these tire pressure sensors. I ordered these off of Amazon for about $33 for the set of four, which is pretty cheap. So I'm hopeful that they're going to work and, and work well. Uh, they're a heck of a lot cheaper than if I bought them at the dealership where they're like about 80 bucks each. If you're going to do this yourself, you got to do a little research and you got to make sure that you get the right sensors. Uh, so these sensors broadcast on different frequencies. And this particular vehicle, the 2011 Jeep Liberty, requires uh, 315 megahertz for the frequency. And that's what these are. Uh, for instance, my 2016 Jeep Wrangler, uh, the tire pressure sensors, while they look the same, they broadcast on a different frequency. They are at 433 megahertz. And if you, get, if you get the wrong ones, they won't communicate properly or work properly. So just be aware of that before you purchase them. I also wanted to mention, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe to the channel yet, uh, please do, do so. And also check out uh, Because Adventure has a Facebook page as well. All right, safety first. Before we lift up the vehicle, we'll put a block, we'll block uh, one of the tires so that uh, the vehicle doesn't accidentally roll. We'll also set the emergency brake. Before we lift the vehicle, obviously, we'll break the lug nuts loose. And I know what you're thinking already, why well, you got a torque wrench in your hand for loosening lug nuts. Uh, that's a big no-no. Uh, my lug nuts on this vehicle are only tightened to 90 foot-pounds and my torque wrench goes up to 160 foot-pounds, so I'm not gonna be exceeding any limits whatsoever. And right now I got my breaker bar at work, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna press ahead. tire is off we're going to take the air out of the tire by removing the cap and then I'm going to use my valve stem core removal tool and take that core right out of the valve stem so rapidly let all the air out while the air is coming out of the tire I'm going to go ahead and get the scissors jack Now that the air is out of the tire, I'm going to slide the tire halfway under the vehicle and that's going to be halfway underneath the pinch seam that's underneath here. I'm going to have the valve with the uh, sensor. I'm going to have it out so that when I push the tire off the bead with these blocks of woods and the, and the scissors jack, that I'm not pushing up against that sensor in there. So to do this, a couple of short blocks of wood. You don't want to have anything too long. If you got a two by four that goes all the way across the tire, when you apply pressure to push the tire off the bead, the tire will have a tendency to lift up on the other side and it doesn't work very well. You need to have more of a point contact on the tire. So I'm going to use a couple of small blocks of wood and I'm going to space them right on the crown of the side wall of the tire here. 
And then I'm going to place my scissors jack on top of those blocks of wood. And then I'm going to engage the scissors jack in, into the pinch seam uh, as you would normally jack the vehicle up. And then it's just a simple process, again, with, the, with all the air out of the tire, with the core removed out of the valve stem. It's just a simple process of extending the scissors jack and that will eventually push the bead off of the rim, the bead of the tire off of the rim, and then you'll have access to the inside of the valve stem where the sensor is so that we can remove it. While I'm doing this, I'm obviously watching to make sure that the tire doesn't lift up too much and that uh, the jack's not twisting uh, or anything. But one thing that you don't have to worry about right now is uh, doing this is not gonna lift the vehicle off the jack stand or anything. Uh, it takes much less force to push the tire off the rim than it would to actually raise the vehicle. And there we go. Now you can see that the tire bead is completely off the wheel and able to push it down all the way around. So now it's a matter of getting the scissors jack out of here at this point. And then we'll work on getting that sensor out. Basically what we got is, you know, that sensor is inside there and you'll notice that there's a curvature to the wheel sensor here. So when they're installed, they need to be installed so that the sensor does kind of lays toward the wheel and not the opposite way that's out into the tire because then this will catch uh, next time someone tries to break the bead on this, like if you need to get new tires and it'll actually then damage the sensor. So you gotta make sure that they're orientated the correct way when we pull them up into the wheel. All right, getting these guys out of here can be a fun process. I'm gonna start with soaping, uh, spraying it down with some soapy water and maneuvering the, the valve stem a little bit to get that soapy water in there so that it moves a little bit freely. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my knee in here with this knee pad, and I wanna get this uh, wrench with the hex bit, and I wanna get into this, you know, inside there, this, this fits together, and I wanna remove the screw, and I wanna remove the sensor, actually, from the back of the valve. This is a little bit easier if you got the tire all the way off, but in my case, I don't want to, I'm not removing the tire. So you kind of got to work with the area that you have. And it might be a, a little bit more of a screw around, but what we'll end up doing is we'll take the sensor off and then I'll take a razor blade and I'm going to cut uh, part of the valve stem away so I can extract it back through the hole all the way. Okay, at this point, to help aid in getting that little screw out of the bottom of the sensor. I'm gonna simply put a vice grips on the valve stem, which allows me to turn it real nice. And then I'm gonna get my, my little wrench in there. You know, what might work better than this is a little, if you got a little Allen key that's, what did I say, 5 64ths hex. That might be the easiest thing, because this is a little bit thick to get in here. I can get it in, but as you can see, the struggle is real. All right, then give this a turn. Until that is completely out, like so. There we are. All right, so there's the screw. And the sensor is out at this point. And then from here, a little persuasion. There's the rest of the valve. 
Okay. So as you can see, it's not the most fun, but definitely doable. And like anything, the more you do, the better you get at it, which I hope is the case for me, since I got three more to do after this. I'm sure my technique will develop. Okay, well, the next thing is we're gonna clean up the valve stem hole. We're gonna bring the new sensor into place using my valve stem puller. And uh, we'll see if my little air compressor has enough oomph to get air into this tire to reset that bead. And like I said, orientation is important on this. We wanna make sure I'm gonna say there's a shiny side on these, shiny side toward the wheel. So that's gonna go in just like that. Okay, all right, that's in. water, valve stem puller, pull this into place, and there it is, that's it, all right, that looks okay, all right, all right, let's see if we can get some air in this thing. Yep, that's going to work. One more thing I'm going to do before I go ahead and reinstall this wheel is I'm going to spray the entire bead up with some soap and water and the valve stem and, and the core, the valve stem core, just to make sure that I don't have any air leaks before putting it back on. Okay, now that I'm confident that the tire is holding air, we'll go ahead and remount it. That's it for this one. Three more to go. Uh, it should be a fun day. But now you've seen what it takes to replace one of these uh, tire pressure uh, sensors. And uh, you can decide for yourself whether it's worth paying someone to do it for you or worth taking a stab at it yourself. After replacing the first tire pressure sensor, I did take the Jeep for a ride and within a couple of blocks, the tire indicator light on the dash had shut itself off. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch this video and subscribing to the channel. And I hope to see you out on the trails real soon.